In this tutorial, we are going to go into more detail looking at the styles of a theme. And to begin with, we'll go into the inspector and we'll click on the styles tab. So once again, every page of your website will have a styles tab under the page inspector. And the styles located here may be all the same or all different depending on how you set things up for your pages. But what you will find whenever you add a new page is that the very first option, Use Master Style, will be selected by default. When that is selected, that means that everything here is controlled by the master style defined for your project. And that master style is defined underneath the Setup tab in the sidebar here. We'd go to the Setup tab and under Settings, we would choose Master Style. What that does is that gives us a look at the website in the preview mode with all of the styles available to be changed here on the right. The very first option we find here is theme styles, and this will always be set to theme default first. And you will find that it is the only option available if you have not created a custom style for your website. And we'll get into what a custom style is in a few minutes, but first let's take a look at master styles and what those do. So when you make changes to the master style here inside of this view, it will update every page of your website with the exact same styles if those pages use the master style. So coming back real quick to the home page, this uses the master style. So if I make a change to a master style, this page will automatically reflect those changes. And so will every other page of my project that uses the master style. So I have the blog page, which does, the about us page, which does, and the contact us page, which also does. So all four of these pages are going to subscribe to whatever styles I apply through the master style setting. So I'll go back into setup under master style and let me make some changes. For example, let me change the header image to header four. There, let's change the max width to 968. That adjusts the available width for the content of the page across here. And then let's change the navigation background. Let's assign it this light purple color. So let me click back into the pages view and we will immediately see that all of those changes have been applied here to the home page, to the blog, about us, and the contact us page. So using the master style makes it very easy to quickly assign styles to every page of your website that is subscribing to those master styles by having this option selected. So what I recommend is that you go ahead and define your master styles here under setup and assign that to um, and customize that to your liking and then assign that style to every page that you want to be the exact same. Now let's say for example that we wanted our blog to be a bit different. I could simply come and uncheck use master style and that is going to reset some of these options here such as the navigation background. You will notice that the header 4 is still there, the max width is still at 968 pixels but anything that's a color picker option will revert back to the original if you uncheck the Use Master Style option. And so I want to make a note of that. Now, in this case, the blog typically would use a sidebar, and that is hidden in the Master Style. So we've unchecked the Use Master Style, and now we can adjust it to display the sidebar. And so now we can display the um, categories and the tags and other information that we want to put in the sidebar of the page. And so this is a case where we would want to um, use some of the master styles, such as the image and the width, but we'd want to adjust the settings, such as the sidebar. And if I want to apply that purple navigation background again, I would just go back into my color picker and click on the color, and that will set that right there. Now perhaps I want to use this same style with the sidebar enabled on another page of my project. Well, I could go to another page, such as About Us, and I could uncheck Use Master Style, I could choose to show the sidebar, I could choose to set the navigation background, or I could create a custom style from what I've done here on my blog page. So next to Theme Styles, where it says Theme Default, we see this cog wheel. If we click on that, it tells us we can save a custom style. So if I select that, I can give it a title. And so maybe I would say um, Website with Sidebar and save it. This becomes a theme style and it's now active here on this page. Now if I go to the About Us page and I want to assign the sidebar 
style, I would come to theme styles and choose web set with sidebar. And then that would set the sidebar to display as you can see. And it also adjusts the color to match the color that I had underneath the blog page. So these color picker options will save into a custom style like we see here. So you can use custom styles for some pages and then you can assign the master style to others. For consistency's sake, it's good to use the master style throughout most of your project if you can. And even for pages that don't use the master, if you will keep many of the styles the same, even as you change others, then that's recommended as well. To look a bit more detail at the color picker, we've used the color picker to adjust the navigation background color in this theme. I want to go back to that and just walk you through the color picker a bit more in case you've never used it before. What you'll find is this panel. This is an Apple developed color picker, so it's consistent across multiple applications in the Mac. And so we will find some different views here. We have the crayons view, we have this view, and all of these. And so we can use any of these views to adjust the color in any way. And then whatever selection we make will apply to that item that we've chosen. Now, if we would like to save a color for future use, we can grab that color from the box here and drag it down and place it in the bar down here below inside of any of these white boxes. So I can drop that there and that will be available for future use simply by clicking on the box down here. Now, if you completely fill up this row with custom colors and you'd like to add more, you can hover your mouse cursor over the dot right here on this bar. Now if you go down too far, you'll get the double arrow. You don't want that. You want to get this hand kind of cursor. And if you get that, then you can click to grab it and then drag and that will open up and reveal more spaces. And so you can have as many blank spaces as you'd like to add more colors there in that area. And you can add custom colors there. If you want to remove one, the easiest way to do it really is to simply choose the white color and then grab it and drag it on top of one of your existing colors to reset it. And so that would be um, kind of a way of removing an existing custom color. You can also create a palette of colors to be used in the future. So you would come to this middle tab, click on the cogwheel and say new, and then you could give it a name. And so I would come here, say rename, and then want to give it a name for the color palette. Now this could be on a per project basis. So for this project, I would give it the name. And then I would set the colors that I wanted to use. And so for example, if I want to use this light purple for the navigation, then I could drag it and drop it here. And I could double click and give it a name. So I could say navigation menu background. And then if I want to remove this white one here, I just select it in the space and click the minus button to remove it altogether from the palette. And so as I continue to use new colors in my project, I would add them to this palette. And this is a great way to keep track of the colors that you're using throughout your website. So if you need to go and choose a certain color at a certain time for something, then you can come to the palette view here. Now there's one other thing you can do, and that is to match a color. You select the magnifying glass and you simply go and hover over the place that you want the color match. So for example, if I wanted to get this background of the content area, which is kind of this off-white, I would come down here, click on that, and that would place this into the bar above. Now the reason that it has also changed the navigation is because I'm still actively working on the navigation color. And so before we jump into that, let me just grab this color here, drag it into the palette, and then I would give it a name such as content background. So I mentioned that as we've been selecting different colors that this title um, navigation background has been updating each time. So let me do this. Let me select the purple once again. And what I want to do now is I want to close out of the color picker. Once you have made a selection for a specific color in the theme styles, you want to close out of the color picker before moving on to another one. So for example, coming into navigation background, I would want to make my selection, close, and then I would scroll down and look for something else. So body text, for example, if I wanted that to be darker, I'm going to come to this palette here and choose a darker color. And then once I get the one I like, I would close out 
before continuing to another one, such as this. So your customizations you make to colors, you want to do one at a time, and then you want to close out of the color picker each time you complete a specific color setting. So that pretty much covers the workflow of working with the styles in a theme. We've looked at how to change individual styles, how to assign master styles through the setup to apply to different pages of your website, and how to create custom styles that can be assigned to unique pages as well. And so those are different ways of controlling the way your website looks. And Rapid Weaver is really flexible in offering a number of ways to do that. And finally, of course, each theme has different styles. And so from one to the next, you will find different options available. And so with that, we will go ahead and wrap up this tutorial.